All right, we're here at West Lawrence High School with head baseball coach Josh Carter. And, Coach, a pretty hot start to your season, just wrapping up non-region play. And how about uh, can you take us through non-region play? How's that going? Yeah, it's gone, it's gone well thus far. I, I was skeptical at the beginning just with our bats. Didn't know how well we would hit the ball. Um, but the guys have, have surprised me greatly. So we've been on a tear, scored a lot of runs, had some good pitching on the mound, solid defense. So I think we're off to a 10-3, and 10-4 and four start, something like that. Um, so getting getting into region play this week, and if we keep hitting the ball like we did against Rutland, we should be solid. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any guys you want to highlight um, throughout um, the non-region play? Yeah, Matthew Thigpen has swung a very hot bat. I think he's got five or six home runs. Eli Floyd has swung a hot bat as well, um, and some and some guys that didn't know exactly what we're going to get out of them this year. Um, Jansen Meeks has swung a good bat. Um, William Callum, who was strong for us last couple years, has swung a good bat. Um, Ian Anderson has swung a good bat as well. And then we've got Eli on the mound, who I knew was going to be a horse for us. No doubt. He's continued to do the same thing this year. Um, and then played solid defense. So uh, those are the guys that I would highlight up until this point. I'm glad to see some guys hitting their stride, you know, uh, right before we get into region play. And before we hop into that, Coach, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, when did you start coaching, um, all that? Yeah, so I started coaching back in 2009, fresh out of college. Gotcha. So I was at Winderboro High School for two years, coached softball and golf there. I went to Hebron Christian Academy after that. I was the head baseball coach there for three years and uh, softball coach there for four years. Then I came, uh, came to what I call home now, West Lawrence. So I've been here for seven years. This is my third year at the helm of the program. I um, coached one year under Coach, coach Brown and been coaching softball here for seven years. Um, I'm out of Wake Ross, Georgia. Uh, my wife, Hope Carter, is from here. Uh, her dad was the superintendent here, so we have some family ties here, and, and glad to be here and glad to be part of the community. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, now, let's hop into region play. Tell us about Rutland, how that series go. Um, any guys you wanna highlight there? Tell All me right. about that. So, so Rutland, you know, some, sometimes they, they have some players, sometimes they don't. They had uh, one really good arm this year in game two, um, and we, we knocked him out in the first inning, scored 11 runs, and I was uh, very, very excited. A little nervous about that arm, but the guys came out and took a challenge and did very well there. So yes, we swept that series, which is a good start to, to region play, and we have Howard next week. So looking forward to uh, taking care of Howard as well. That's great. Glad to get a hot start for our Raiders heading into region play. And with that, we'll take a commercial break right here on TV 35. Hi, I'm Kyle Gerard with A-plus Flooring and Construction. We can build you any new structure from the ground up, just like we're building a brand new showroom here that's going to open up in March. So give us a call, 478-676-2662. It's St. Patrick's time in Dublin, and no better time to save the green than at Lakes Alignment. Join the leprechauns at Lakes Alignment and save on all your commercial and agricultural vehicles. No matter what you need or when you need it, our trucks are rolling 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Don't let your truck cost you money by being down. Let the experts at Lakes Alignment get you rolling again. Big truck alignment, industrial tire pressing, commercial truck tires and service is only a phone call away. Elk Lake and family have been serving you at the same location behind Thomas Auto Parts since 1954. On behalf of Neil Harden and the Lake family and staff, we hope you enjoy all the festivities at the 57th Annual St. Patrick's Festival. Lakes Alignment and Commercial and Agricultural Vehicle Service. Call 272-4230 and our trucks are rolling your way. Aaron Gobra. All right, Coach, we're back. And we talked uh, a hot start getting that sweep against Rutland heading into the region. Let's talk Howard. You got Howard coming up in your next series. Um, what, what should we expect from Howard coming up? Yeah, I know Howard's got two good arms. They've got Garnett back from last year, um, and he's, he's a strong arm. And then they have a uh, Martin kid. He's a strong arm too. Both are seniors. So, you know, if we can get past them, I think we'll be all right. Get into the bullpen early. I think that will be advantageous for us. So, but really just the same thing, uh, Jackson. Just go in, have good approaches at the plate, 
get solid pitching from our number one Eli and Matthew Thigpen is going to start game two and then Gunnar Jeffers will be our game three guy. But just play solid defense and just all facets of the game, just stay solid. And, and what I preach to the guys, if they, if they have 100% on their part, you know, effort, attitude, all that good stuff, that's going to make us a lot better as a team. That's right. And, Coach, we keep those hot bats going. I mean, what a rotation there with Thigpen and Floyd and Jeffers there. And um, let's talk numbers. You know, we got some hot bats. Let's, it, you want to run through some numbers? Yeah, I will. So, so Matthew Thigpen's batting 425. He's off to a very yeah. hot start. He was at 600 or so um, in the beginning. So he's dropped off a little bit. You can't stay that hot for long. For sure. But, you know, Thigpen is one of those guys kind of like Matthew Mebbin last year. And he's had, I was actually having a conversation with J, uh, Jace Thompson on third base of the night, and Thig Penn looked bad on two pitches. And I told, I told Jace, I said, he's the type of kid that can look bad on two pitches and hit it out the next pitch, and he hit it about 400 feet the next pitch. Take that. Yeah. So uh, William Callum's another one. He's at 422. Um, Eli Floyd's at 362. Jansen Meeks at 333. Um, Jason Tom, uh, Jace Thompson um, got off to a slow start this year, but has rebounded very, very well. He's at 314 now, and then uh, Gunnar Jeffers is at 310. So if we can keep guys, that many guys over 300, we're going to be solid. As uh, for a, sure. I mean, as half of them over 400. Yeah. Keep six guys over 300, we'll be all right. That's right. I'll run through some pitching numbers for you if you want me to. All right, to, yeah, okay? let's talk pitching, Coach. So, so Floyd has been a, Floyd's been a bulldog for us ever since his freshman year. I just like his, his demeanor out on the mound, kind of I'm going to throw you the best I got. And if you can hit it, you can hit it. So he's thrown 21 innings thus far, and he's sporting a, uh, a one ERA. So uh, Matthew Thigpen and, and Gunnar Jeffers has thrown the ball well, uh, too. And, and two guys that have come out and thrown the ball well this year, didn't know what we would get from them, is Caden Baggett and Parker Bryant. Um, Caden's a sophomore, and he's come out and thrown the ball well for us. And then Parker Bryant's a freshman. He's fresh out of middle school, so he's a young guy. But he has come out, and he's really given us some solid innings with the Bulldog mentality on the mound. It's good to see young guys get in there, you know, for the future. And, Absolutely. Um, Coach, let's talk seniors and um, any other guy you want to highlight. Let's highlight our seniors this year. All right, so we got, we got Eli Floyd. We got Jace Thompson. got Jace Clark. got uh, Gunnar Jeffers and then Ethan Hart. So um, all those guys are starters for us. Jace Clark was a relief pitcher. He injured his knee early on in the career or early on in the season, rather. So as of right now, he's out for the foreseeable future. Could possibly rehab and get back, but really, really love this senior class. They're just really good guys that come from really good families. Um, and I've had conversations with many of them and, and ask them about their roles and, and every single one of them say, uh, you know, whatever's best for the team, that's what I want. So that's the kind of guys, coachable guys, that, that I like to have around the program. Yes, sir. I mean, all five great leaders, uh, just bringing leadership to the team, and we hope to see Jace Clark back for sure. And um, with that, we'll take another commercial break here on TV35. The City of Dublin Natural Gas provides the most cost-efficient source of energy available today. So for your home, choose the most natural resource. Safe, clean, efficient. All new subdivisions around the Dublin area have natural gas available. Start reducing your energy bills today with Dublin City Natural Gas Department. Natural gas, the smart choice. Call 277-5048 today and let us help you start saving today. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Dustin Gay. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon with Houston Clinic Orthopedics, and we'd really like to invite everybody to come out to our new uh, office facility to take a look at it. It's a larger space with physical therapy, and uh, we're just excited to have it, and we'd love for people to come out and visit us. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. All right, welcome back. And coach, uh, last year a deep Elite Eight run um, with that squad. Um, lost some guys, but let's compare this year's team to last year's team. Um, what do you see out of this team that you saw from last year with that team? Yeah, so going back to last year, it was a, a, a very heartbreaking defeat in that third game uh, against Marist, up a couple runs in the last inning. Um, but the way we've approached that this year with this team is just, just use it for the positive. You know, you can draw a lot of negativity out of that. Um, but there's a lot of positive there as well. Just go out and be Bulldogs and think nobody can beat you and, and do, the, do the little things right and, uh, and see, see what happens. So, you know, last year we lost a, lost a couple big arms and Colton Scott and Tyler Franks and, 
and had uh, Bradley Wilson that went out early with, with UCL surgery, and he's rehabbed well and doing well at Mississippi State, and, and Tyler's doing well at, at Kennesaw State, and then we had Matthew Mebbin as well, big bat for us, and he's doing well at South Georgia. So we lost five or six really good bats, you know, including Colton Scott, and then you got Carson Eastep as well. So that was really one of my main concerns coming to this year is how we're going to produce runs. You know, I knew we were going to have to play fundamental ball, but like I said, the guys have really, really impressed me with their situational approaches, you know, and then, then with our arms, we've had guys throw the ball well. Another guy that I have failed to mention yet, but has been one of our best relievers is Tucker Brown. He's come out and thrown the ball very well as a, as a junior with another bulldog mentality. So, you know, it's two very different teams, um, but, but could very well be on the, on the same path. You know, last year's team, had had very good culture and 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 I like the personnel that we have and, and this year is the same way it's all about you know playing basketball man it's all about the team chemistry that's right. if that's you right. got team chemistry man you can give me a, a mediocre to a just above mediocre team with good team chemistry versus an elite team with no team chemistry and that first team is going to beat that second team all day long that's right and you talk chemistry I mean it's just going to carry on through the program you know you see last year with the you know great culture and it carries on to this year and with those seniors being the leaders that they are It'll continue to carry on. Well, um, and coach, uh, let's highlight the region opponents. Um, you know, what do we see this year from the region? Um, what can we expect to see? So Perry always comes out with a solid squad. They've got two or three really solid arms, um, and they've got some bats in the lineup as well. So um, I know they're going to be a strong opponent. Um, coach does a good job with that program. Uh, Spalding will be a will be another strong opponent, and then Howard will give us some competition as as well. So I really see those four teams as being the being the top four teams out the gate. And it's still early and it's baseball and you're dealing with teenagers and you never know what's going to happen. So we'll see in the next five weeks how, how things shake out. But um, when it's all said and done and the dust settles, I expect the Raiders to be right there at the hey, top. That's right. That's right. We want them Raiders on top. And um, earlier we highlighted the seniors. Um, any underclassmen you want to talk about highlight? Yeah, so Caden Baggett's going to be a big part of our program. He's already shown that he's going to help us out, not only this year, but in the future as well. Uh, Parker Bryant has been uh, just a breath of fresh air. You know, very rarely do you get a freshman to come out and throw the ball like he's thrown the ball um, with the competitiveness and the tenacity that he has. So, um, got big JT. I love me some Jaden Todd. Um, brought him up to travel with us at varsity. He's gotten a couple ABs. He's just a big, fun, lovable guy. And he's going to be, he's gonna be uh, an, an, a big part for us in the future, playing first and swinging a hot bat as he's done on JV all year. Um, so those are three guys that will definitely help us, uh, help us in the future. And then we've got a lot of younger guys who it's kind of yet to be determined what their role is going to be. You know, watching them play on JV and hopefully they develop um, through the summer. And then Coach Merck down at the middle school is running a solid program, as he always does. So he's developing some talent down there that will help us up here. For sure, for sure. And let's let's talk the JV year. Um, what's their record? How many games have they played? So, you know, going into the JV year, I schedule, uh, the schedule's done in May or June. You know, usually I have the schedule done before before the year's out. Right. So I'm scheduling based upon the guys that I think are coming back. So I had, had a few guys before tryouts uh, come to me and say they just weren't going to try out. So I lost some arms there. So really we only have – uh, three to four consistent arms on JV. So that's hurt us a little bit. But I tell you what, um, those guys have, have really competed this year. We've got uh, two newcomers, well, three newcomers that haven't been in a program, Austin Howard. Uh, we got Roderick Pierce and Elijah Jones. All of them are pitchers and didn't know really what we would get from any of those guys. But I tell you what, they've been a pleasant surprise and they've thrown the ball well. Um, Roderick Pierce and Elijah Jones have never played organized baseball. Wow. Uh, at the school level. So they're both left-handers, and, and we decided as a staff to give them a shot this year. And they've been a pleasant surprise throwing a lot of strikes. Matter of fact, Roderick Pierce came into a bases-loaded situation with no outs, and he got three outs in just two pitches. So, and we were super excited for that kid. But they, they've had a good season. They got a couple wins, a couple ties as well. 
uh, with one loss. So I've been I've been pleased with the way they've played, and they've swung some good bats as well. I mean, with those guys showing that much growth, I mean, and never playing organized baseball, you have to think the future's pretty bright for them, you know? Hope so, I hope mean, so, You think yeah. so, you think so. With that, we'll go back to a commercial break here on TV 35. At Dublin Chevy Nissan, we're getting the St. Paddy's party started early. When you come to Dublin for our St. Patrick's Day Festival, make sure and visit Dublin Chevy Nissan. With shipments of new GMs and Nissans coming daily and a wide selection of pre-owned vehicles, don't miss the party of the year at Dublin Chevy Nissan. At Dublin Chevy Nissan, we take pride in turning our inventory. So if you see it online or on the lot, act quickly. And remember, Don sells trucks well at Dublin Chevy Nissan. I'm Glenn Register and spring is here. Hometown Supply has all of your lawn and garden equipment from zero turn mowers to string trimmers and blowers. We carry all major parts and offer service and repair, so come see us at Hometown Supply. And remember, if you can't do business at Hometown Supply, you just can't do business. All right, here we go. Coach, um, we're, we're heading into region play. I uh, just finished our first series. And just let's just talk about, you know, the philosophy um, going from non-region, what's, what's the shift there from non-region to region play? Yeah, so at the beginning of the season, you know, we take the first first two or three weeks and we've got to get all of our stuff in. You know, we've got to get all of our fundamentals, all of our first thirds, all of our bunt Ds, and just get everybody on the same page verbiage-wise and philosophy-wise before we get into the region play. Um, early season, we've got a lot of inter-squads where our guys are are throwing against their teammates and getting arms ready for play and also getting our bats um, seeing live arms. So that's much different. Once we get into play and especially region play, not a whole lot of inner squad going on there. You know, it's more bullpen work in the bullpens and, and practice changes a lot. We, I'm a big believer if you can't get stuff done in two hours when it comes to the season, you're not going to get it done. You're just wasting time. So like today, we'll come out and they'll stretch and throw. We'll go through our fundamentals for 30 minutes or so that session. And then we'll take BP and we'll get out of here. So if, if we blunder something in a game, whether it be a rundown or whether it be a bunt, uh, bunt situation, bunt coverage, we'll, we'll go through that stuff in situations. But other than that, they know at this time of the year, there's not a whole lot of practice time. We're practicing two days a week versus five days a week. So uh, we've got to get it done on the field when we play opponents. That's right, that's right. Let, I mean, get these guys to buy in out here at practice. And, and let's talk about practice. How do these guys practice, you know, um, uh, hard practice or are they going hard at practice or are they just kind of joshing around out here yeah get... um most you know most of the time they go pretty hard sometimes we got to get on their tail every now and of then course, of you course. know of course we preach you know go 100 percent. you've got to take ground balls and, and take swings as game like as possible and and all we can do as coaches is put them in situations to succeed and to compete and it's it's up to them whether they compete in order to succeed so I've been happy overall thus far. You've got great leadership out of that senior group, and those guys, um, they take these younger guys and they guide them because a lot of, a lot of times guys get tired of hearing, you know, hearing us coaches talk to them. They'd rather hear the players give them some suggestions, and, and, and we preach that as well. I mean, I want, these, I want these seniors and juniors to be voices for these guys um, so they're leading them and they're taking ownership of the program as well. All right, Coach, we just talked philosophy and, you know, um, about these practices. And let's, let's go back to talking non-region and region. You know, when you're getting ready for region play, how is your scheduling with the non-region opponents? You know, uh, we scheduling easy wins that we can pick up or, you know, tough opponents to get ready for the region play. Yeah. Yeah, I try to, I try to schedule good competition for our guys. I, you know, the, the biggest thing for me is I want to see good quality arms. So I enjoy playing guys around here. You know, we we'll always play Dodge and Bleckley. Um, they run good programs. Coach Corn over at Vidalia, um, trying to get home on the schedule as well. We played them once this year. We'll do a home and away next year with them. So it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's difficult, but I try, I try to get as many strong, uh, strong opponents as we can. We'll take a trip or two to Atlanta each year um, because I want them to be as prepared as possible once we hit that region play. For sure. I mean, you got to get the guys ready to play for the games that do matter going in, you know, for playoffs and getting ready for that. Well, um, Coach, we wish you best of luck this year. I appreciate you for your time. Um, and that's just going to about wrap us up here for um, at the West Lawrence Coaches Show on TV 35.